Hi, welcome back, y'all. Thanks for bearing in with us a little bit. Thank you for following and the support and all the love. This is episode number 11. Yay! Woo! I'm Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. And this is Two Aprons. Tonight we have delicious seared chicken and frigola sarda. With lemon caper sauce. Woo! Fun to say. That is what, and frigola sarda is like, you just sound fancy. You do. Like, it's a pretty simple dish, guys. No joke. Like, this is probably going to be pretty quick. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start with getting our water boiling here. Um, Three fourths of the way up. Salted, of course. Salted. What do we do with our boiling water? Always. We salt it. That's right. So there's the salt. We get that going before we even do the display of the deliciousness that's in the box. I still have not Googled why that's a thing. Um, so try to remind me, and next time I will tell you why we salt that. But <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it to make it more delicious. <laughs> to make it more delicious. This is a zucchini. Mm. Fantastic. Ooh, bright and colorful. Oh, we have some sweet peppers here. Yummy, yummy, yummy. <gasps> Capers, they taste like the ocean. I love them. Right. One tiny lemon. A lemon. That is a very small lemon. I like it, though. Because that means usually, usually that means it's organic and very juicy. So I like that. And we're going to roll it to release the juices before we cut it. So that'll give mm. us some extra. We have some garlic. Fantastic. Um, yummy, yummy, tiny. tiny butter? butter. Tiny butter, yep. That's that's not tiny butter. That's, that is some butter right there. That's true. That's true. It's just tiny. <laughs> nice. Oh, and here's the star, the fregola sarda. This is our fregola sarda, and this is a type of pasta. No one would guess from looking at it. <laughs> it looks like the ice cream you buy at the mall that's like frozen into tiny balls, Ooh, only smaller. Dip and dots. Yes, dip and dots. Dip and it dots. looks like dip and dots. From um, the Wayback Machine, y'all. From the Wayback Machine. I looked it up. That's not what it is. It's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> It is delicious, though. Yeah, it is, absolutely. I don't know if it's the best thing for a cool treat or whatnot. It's so we not. have the water <laughs> boiling. We're going. We've got our salted water. Um, and so the first thing rinse, we're going to do... Rinse the vegetables. Is rinse the yep, vegetables. Yep. Wash them. after that... Wash the fresh produce, y'all, always. The lemons, we don't have to unless you're zesting. If you're zesting, That's true. please wash it. Please. Yep. Please, even if it's organic, you never know what it's come into contact with. It's, there's a whole process of getting it to you. Like, well, people please. might touch it and all that stuff looking at it. The, um, peppers, peppers. Yeah, that's true. You never know who, like, I'm very touchy in the grocery store for avocados oh, yeah. and stuff. So, Well, like, we used to be. Well, no, and avocados, like, obviously you're peeling it. You're not mm -hmm. eating the peel. But, like, still, just be careful. You don't know who's handled what. So, for the peppers, we're doing our core and thinly sliced, so you know how I like to core, I go around the world. And y'all, so I tried this the other day, it did not work for me. I'm pretty sure if David pulls this off, he's a magician. Oh, thank you. I'm glad I'm not the only one it did not no, it still gets, work for. It still gets a good bit, but, um, but sometimes... You're going to have to for the slice it lengthwise anyway. I will. Okay. I just do that to kind of get the majority of it out. The, um, sit here and get that. No, it's really cool when it worked. I was very impressed when mm -hmm. I saw that for the first time. I was like, why have I not been doing that? Uh, because I had never seen it before. That's why. I got that from the YouTubes. I was going to say, where did you learn that? From what YouTube YouTubes? were you watching? Oh, I don't remember. Just David was doing homework. I'm not the only try hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. You are. You are. She's no. the only one. I know All right, so this is boiling. So what we're going to oh, do is good. we're going to throw in our frigola sarda, boom, boom. which is a pasta. Yeah, I love put that pasta. In. Love Woo! pasta, y'all. So delicious. For eight minutes, we've got our timer going. And frigola sarda is a type of pasta that is made um, by taking semolina flour and water. Those are the two ingredients, according to Wikipedia. Um, y'all know I googled this stuff, so no surprise mm -hmm. there. Um, but it is a pasta made from semolina flour and water, rolled into balls and cut into oh. two, three millimeter like small balls. Tiny, tiny. Tiny balls. Um, <laughs> and it comes from the Italian island of Sardinia. Ooh. That is the only fancy, thing I could That's find fancy. regarding the Sarda on Fregola Sarda. That's Everything awesome. else, like, I even Googled, like, what is the Sarda in Fregola Sarda? Like, there was no, like, it comes from that Italian island of Sardinia. <laughs> But just, you know, I'm, my deductive reasoning skills let me believe that that's what's happening there. So, we've got our 
Pepper is going here. Y'all know to remove the ribs. And y'all saw it. Three out of four of those I was able to core my little fancy easy way. And you can still pull out the ribs. Like if they oh, have yeah. like some white left in there that you're like, mm, mm -hmm. I just, that's not going to taste super awesome. And that's all it takes you look at. And yeah. most of these, it's not too bad. And but, you can just peel those out. They peel out really yeah, yeah. like pretty easily. Not too bad. Those ones yeah. aren't too bad. They're not bad at all. It's just like... No, I like, like leaving a little bit because it leaves a little bit of meat to it. It's very um, satisfying to me to like peel these ribs out. Yeah, you can. I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> all right, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to save yep. some of them because I want to have a little bit of substance to them. Um, it's not one of those things you're going to taste. It's really more of a texture and a little bit of a crunch. Um, if you know different, show different. Put down in the comments and teach me if I'm wrong. Or disagree with me. I like people that agree with me. But I like people that disagree with me too because I'm not a punk. Only to an extent though. <laughs> <laughs> no, like all of us do. Come on. Like, I like disciplined people who agree with me, not people who just like show their ass. people who can back it up that disagree. Yeah, with we want to also just keep their temper while debating. I don't want to argue with someone. I want to debate with someone. And a lot of people don't know the difference. Um, and there is a difference, folks. Oh, there's a big difference. And you can be passionate and still not be, you know, disparagingly. Yeah. Um, and that's what has, is happening on social media a lot lately, just with mm -hmm. some of the stuff that's going on. Oh, like, yeah. you can give someone, like, very academic reasons to agree or disagree with you. But, like, when it gets to the point of name-calling and all of that stuff, like, man, just call it. There's, like, that's not helping anything. Nobody has ever been like, oh, you called me this, so now mm -hmm. I'm going to change to your point of view. Like, no. That's right. And I've had to learn that the hard way. A lot of times you want to just get out there and just act like you're with your buddies. You know what I mean? Like, you might have a little bit, uh more of a familiar friend set so you just talk a certain way or whatever and when you're publishing something you don't really want to do that people get all sorts of offended because um, and kind of rightfully so because you can't you can't read tone right so and whatever what is happening is. in your head is the reality that's of the what it is so when i'm like oh fuck you buddy i don't give a shit da, 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 and someone else gets all butter because they're like you said like Rah, 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 rah. Like I got all intense and there's no tone. You don't know. So you don't know if I'm lying just to back it up or if you, you couldn't tell if I was just kind of, you know, hurt, you know, busting your balls a little bit or something. Um, but I have learned it does really hurt for, uh, feelings and whatnot. And you don't really want to do that to get your point across. Uh, unless someone's doing something really stupid. You know, right, I like, withhold the right to call someone on some real stupidity. I mean, if you're but, trying to, so I'm reading a book right now called How to Be an Anti-Racist. Oh, yeah? If you are combating, like, racism, if you, like, really have a strongly held opinion about something that is, like, going against something that is truly wrong, mm -hmm. you know, like... By all means, use whatever means you feel necessary to get that point across. That's but right. make sure that it's really worth it, you know, That's before right. you start, like, alienating yep. people. Yeah, so we want to get to this, and we're going to medium dice. This. We're yes, medium dicing. Absolutely. We're medium dicing our zucchini here. Um, it's we all know. We all know how social media can get. Just be responsible. Recognize that some of that stuff will stay out there. And if you need to take a break, take a break. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. We've had to do it. I've had to do it. Like, even just reading it, I try not to get involved in all of that stuff as far as, like, comments and messages yeah. and all of that. But still, sometimes just reading it is enough where I'm like, I have to get off this because it's getting too negative. And I'm like, well, and what whatever. you can do, too, is just take a break from some people. <laughs> That's true. Facebook isn't really the problem. <laughs> it's certain people on there, and you mm -hmm. can allow or not allow. And I'm not talking about just everyone who disagrees with you. But if someone right. really is just either like, maybe they're just lying, a lot of people that do that, they don't ever, you're not getting in an argument, you're just having someone fabricate stuff, and then he tries to make a funny picture with it or something. The, um, when you know you're dealing with that, unless you're practicing for your uncle at Thanksgiving, because it is good <laughs> practice. Um, there's and no, sometimes that's necessary. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> those people exist, just so you can get your practice in. But um, it's really not worth it. And at the end of the day, you got to recognize, what am I trying to achieve here? And then stay true to that. And so you don't want to be pulled down by the wrong people. It's good to push certain people out of your lives um, or let them push you out of their lives. Whatever. Don't fight it. You know what I mean? Um, it's there are some people who are toxic who you just need to be away from. Oh, yeah. And well, and some people can't never tell. You know what I mean? They don't. Some people just run their whole lives on gossip. Oh, and yeah. they don't want to do the homework or spend the money to find out what the truth is. So really, it just depends what was the first story they heard. You know what I mean? The, um, and they'll just go off that. So the first story they heard was Fox News, they're going off Fox News. So the first story they heard was CNN, they're going off CNN. And then the loyalist 
and they'll just stay to wherever the first was. That's, so their whole opinions are just based on luck. Yeah, and <laughs> you know, some people bubble themselves. They like do. Those people are not going to be open to debate. They're not going to be open to comment. Like, maybe snooze them, maybe whatever mm-hmm. you need to do. But, like, you know, like, I have some people in my family who I just don't, like, because they're never going to change. And yep. it's just not worth it. The, not worth the effort, not worth the stress. So Yeah, you, know, you still... Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. No, it's fine. Just, like, you do you. Do what you need to do for your mental health, for your well-being, and That's be right. okay with that. And know that you can love someone and not be involved in their political debates. Absolutely. You don't have to talk whatever with everyone. Um, I think it is healthy, too, if people are disciplined and can keep, um, and keep kind of it jovial. You know what I mean? And I usually try and do that by keeping things a little bit lighthearted and keeping things a little bit youthful, but um, certain people can't do that. So also recognize mm-hmm. that when you're on Facebook, um, you're not in control of who's all in the room. So not everyone's going to receive that. When you think, like, your joke might land or whatever, it doesn't mean that it will because there's so many different people in there. And, you know, it's just being sensitive to different people and just kind mm-hmm. of knowing your boundaries with different people. Um, but what we've got now is we've got our zucchini medium diced. We've got our peppers stemmed and, um, ooh. Thinly sliced. We are getting some boilage up yeah, in we there. Are. We can turn that down a little bit. Take it off the heat to let that boil go down. And that happens really quickly. It does. And we can she put caught it, it in on. time. She caught it in time. <laughs> Before it started, like, sounding. And this we um, quarter and de seed, is that correct? Yes, we're going to quarter and de seed the lemon. And then we're going to roughly chop two cloves of garlic. So y'all know us. That's like five. Yeah, right? Because <laughs> we love it. It's so we good do. for you. It helps with immune um, immunities and stuff. It helps with, like, fighting common, like, viruses and the common cold and all that kind of thing. Which I think COVID nineteen I read somewhere is based off of the common cold, like some. So you know I but have we're no not idea. Y'all. No <laughs> idea if garlic helps. Haven't googled this. Just saying, like it's, I don't think it's it hurts. been proven to be healthy, and yeah, it doesn't hurt. So like garlic it up. You're quarantining. Like who are you trying not to exactly. garlic for? Come on. Exactly. <laughs> and plus, if they eat dinner with you, they're gonna have just the same. That, exactly. You so it's all it. good. And. Maybe, maybe it's not, not on the first date. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's a, a new person, and you can just brush your teeth after, like a good, healthy adult. Here we go. So, you guys, I watched this amazing video on YouTube. It wasn't amazing, and it was probably actually on Instagram, and it was very short. Um, but it says, like, the way that most people do this is to pour this in here, and the way that you're supposed to do this is to set this on top and then strain through it. Oh, that's clever. And because most of these dishes say return it to the pot when it's done. You're saving a step. I feel like that's, like, you know, more productive. Because then I, exactly, as uh, Gerald David said, I've saved saved a step. That's genius. So that worked out pretty well. Work? Oh, yeah. Oh, look at there us we learning We've stuff. We've got our drain stuff. Learning stuff. And that stuff. fitted look right in there. That. We just poured that right out. I have successfully conceded a lemon. Hmm. Aren't I fancy? Aren't I fancy? I had faith in you, baby. I knew you could do it. I know. We're just trying times. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, actually. Some of those lemons yeah. have so many seeds where you're like, if yeah. I de-seed this, what's left? So. That's, right. <laughs> That's right. So we've got our pasta prepared. We're still um, looking to do the garlic, and we're going to roughly chop the capers. Uh, we can probably start heating up this pan because we'll do the veggies before we do the chicken. This does next. actually say what? Well, we we're supposed to do that before, so we're good. It said <laughs> to um, it said to rinse it to remove excess starch. We didn't do that, so we will tell you how this turns out. Like that's right. Uh, we'll let you know. No, we can rinse it though. It's not too late. Do you want to? Well, it says before you cook it, so no. Because no, yeah, what I fine. read, because I was trying to read about that today, like why do you rinse pasta for to remove excess Ooh, starch yeah, before you whatever. That. Um, the only thing I could find, I could not find any reason to rinse it prior to cooking. Um, and what I found was that the starch helps the sauce adhere to the pasta. So most of the sites that I read said you do not want to rinse your pasta after you've cooked it. So we're just going to go with that and hope our sauce adheres better. Oh, you wanted to do it before we Yeah, it was it. before we um, I put it in the water. I misunderstood that. I misunderstood And that. I totally forgot about that and I could not mm-hmm. find a reason to do that anywhere <laughs> online. Which, if you've been online, there are pretty extensive, like, there sites are. for that. So, the fact that I couldn't find anything on it makes me wonder, like, what what's happening. All here. I could find were ads for weird stuff. I tried. <laughs> there are tons of ads for weird stuff. We own a lot of weird stuff because of those ads. We do. We do. I got an LED hat, y'all. It's awesome. <laughs> 
You're welcome. <laughs> That's right. That's right. A gift from the Mighty Kitty. It was gorgeous. So there's actually like an app that you put mm -hmm. out. Oh! I lost what a, happened? I lost a garlic clove there. Oh. I think. I'll get it. Okay. Or cool. wait. Did you I, get I'm it? Gonna, I, I'm going to uh -oh. look for it. Well, I heard it go down there. No, I, I see it. If you can rinse it for me, that would be great. No, we don't need um, floor garlic. We're gonna talk. Okay, let's. Let, I'm I'm much better with that actually. No, no, no. Um, we're not gonna use floor garlic. Hey, can I do that for you while explain? You we took out a camera a, shot. Yep. We have a ton of garlic, so the fact that we lost a clove, not a big deal. Yeah, that's why I was like, we're not at floor garlic levels yet, y'all. Don't. We're not. You know what I mean? If you want to <laughs> sponsor us, sponsor us. But, but yeah. we still have garlic. That's right. <laughs> um. But now, so this like, is going on. all of this, the zucchini is going in. And what's the time we set for this? Let's see. We're going to add salt to this. As always. Two to three minutes. Or until lightly brown. So we'll go ahead and set that for three. And I'll we salt that it. going. And then if you want to get salt and pepper, yeah. Plenty of salt. Mm-hmm. You already have salted water, so keep in mind your salt is. Yeah, but all that boils away. This just adds extra electrolytes. I'm gonna, I'll Google that. And all let right, you so know. what's the uh, um, next thing? The next thing I want to do Ooh. is dice the garlic. Oh, is that God. more garlic? No, that was. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, how much garlic did I lose there? So we're gonna do that. So I pop this to break it just against the cutting board. He has stronger hands than I do. And because this bounces everywhere. Don't break it up over the trash can or whatever. You kind of got to do it over a board. Otherwise, like, what just happened to her will happen to you. And it just kind of flies everywhere. At least it does for me. Um, and here we go. So I'll break some off if you want to start peeling it. Yeah, we're going to add this garlic pretty soon. So if we could get some big cloves there, that would be Yeah, there we go. We'll use all those. Those are a little weird. Doesn't matter. We'll use all these. I um, lost a bunch of boom, boom. cloves. So sad. Boom, boom. Oh, I love garlic. And now the zucchini is starting to sizzle pop. I'll give that a little stir. I put stirring. And you guys have seen me do this before. You just basically hit it and then like the peel magically comes off. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Um, the zucchini is stirring occasionally, so we just want to make sure we check in on that every now and then like Ger Gerald David just did. And... Getting all of this stuff off, and then we're gonna dice that or roughly chop it. Mm -hmm. have to look. But it's one or the other. All right, so we've got a couple of cloves now. Yeah, well, I'll help keep peeling. And you don't really need to cut off both ends. If it has like a hard um, texture on the end, you probably want to remove that just because it's unpleasant to yeah, eat. Yeah, not the best texture. But you won't taste a difference. It all tastes like garlic, but I cut it off, or I'll pinch it off as I'm trying to peel it. And I kind of go through and just do this, you know, boom, boom, get it all off. Look at this, you guys. Oh, and that's the timer for the zucchini. What goes next? Well, what happens next, I'm pretty sure the garlic is involved in So if you want to look at that, I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped right quick. So slice peppers and chopped garlic, so I'll do the peppers. Let me slide yeah. this real quick. So I don't want to move it. No, I appreciate well. that. Thank you. They'll have the peppers. Always tell your partner if you're moving the cutting yeah. board while they're cutting. And I think that's pretty good. That's I'm going to get like just a little bit more. Yep, yep, do it, do it. Because some of that's like. Nope, but I think we're know, good though. If you bite into it and your partner's not expecting it. <laughs> there we go. And sure add the garlic, y'all. There, there we go. go. Put this on. We got a timer going for two to three minutes. All right, so we've got our timer going, and while we do that, our next step is the chicken. But I'm gonna go ahead and get ahead of the game and roughly chop the capers, which you guys know how much I love mm -hmm. capers. They taste like the ocean. They're amazing, like, and I'm going to do them better than the garlic, because mm -hmm. frankly, I have more time, so. Yummy capers, <laughs> yummy capers. Got a little rush on the I'm garlic, but the capers are good. Oh, thank you. So sweet. Oh, and that garlic smells so good. I can already smell the garlic going. Woo! No, garlic is fantastic. Again, lots of like medicinal properties. Hippies have been using it forever and bohemes to like, you know, ward off 
all the common illnesses. And vampires. Don't forget vampires. And vampires. And to ward off vampires. That is true. So many vampires. Oh my gosh, y'all. So one of our favorite cities is New Orleans. Um, we go there as oh, much yes. as possible. So much. And some of the stories, like, we've done some of the ghost tours and stuff. And, like, mm -hmm. I know cheesy, right? But still, like, fantastic information. And, and so the, much fun. They were <laughs> and really, so really nice. And so much fun, yes. We loved it. Um, it was so much fun. Um, and so one of the stories was literally about, like, how the um, rumors about vampires got started and everything. Um, I highly recommend New Orleans if you ever get a chance to go. Yeah. Like, it's fantastic. We love it so much. Yeah, no, I liked it. And the best part about the story was how uh, the townsfolk would misconstrued these long boxes that brought these nuns' belongings. And they kind of looked like coffins. And nuns would, like, jump shit. They'd escape. There's a lot of, ooh. Oh, that's a timer. Ooh. Also, there technically, go. these people weren't nuns. They were shipping their daughters to the nuns, and the oh, daughters yeah. would jump like at different reform. courts yeah. to, like, go with guys they met. What's... Who knew? Yeah. Um, so, that? what we've got is our vegetables there. Um, we're going to add those to the start oh, of we don't have the capers? No. Those are going to go in our sauce after the protein. Ah. So, we're going to get that in there. I'm going to pull off the chicken. Yummy. We've got some fantastic chicken breasts here. Mm. It's always nice to have fantastic press. <laughs> <laughs> You're being naughty. I'm very naughty. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. That's going to mix. I'm going to cover that. Yeah, go ahead and cover that to kind of keep it warm. And then we're going to add our sauce to that after the chicken. Um, but right two now, two paper, yes, absolutely. I lost my basic, uh, my basic protein. We're gonna get that pan heated up. Yes. We've got a little bit of garlic left in there, and of course, we're gonna leave that because what yes. do we love? Garlic. Yes. We love vampires too, but you know. Not as much as garlic. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Why wow. right. choose one or the other? It's freaking garlic, man. And you have to invite them in, so just uh, be careful. You have to move an eye, Kitty. You have to put it on the other eye. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Boom. So that way now it's actually this. heating. Woo, yeah. look you at that. You turn that arm because otherwise I'm going to get stuff all over it. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Here we go. So he's got the breasts out there. He's going to pat them dry, yep. lucky him. And then we're going to go ahead and season them with salt and pepper. Boom. And I think that's all that's happening to those. I think it is. I think honest. that's all it is. Yeah, salt and pepper on both sides. So you know how we do it. We're going to season one side. We're going to put that side down on that heated oil in the pan, yep. and then we're going to season the other side. Like, no need to flip it over or lose a bunch of stuff to the wet paper towels. That's exactly all the grossness. Right. Yeah, I know. That's exactly right. So I've got this because he has mm -hmm. dealt with the chicken. Ick on my hands. Ick exactly. on my hands. Try not to touch anything. So I'm going to use this huge amount of salt. Ooh. And these look delicious. These are really, really good sized pieces of they meat. They are. I'm super excited about them. And we like to do lots of pepper, like an annoying amount of pepper. Annoying to him, I love it. Yes, it's delicious. <laughs> oh, and our oil is sizzling. I can see that now, Ooh. so these are ready. It's going to be up to temp, which is always nice. Yeah. We're going to get that in. Can you just switch that a little bit for me? Absolutely. Now, yeah, and sometimes, y'all, it's so funny mm -hmm. because, like, there we go. Your burners are not necessarily level. <laughs> That's right. <They're laughs> Which not. is not something you really know um, until you start cooking on them. And then you're like, oh, all of the oil has pulled to the right. Like, <laughs> What do we set the timer for? Um, so we're going to set the timer for, I want to say, seven minutes. So we've got the chicken going for seven minutes per side. Because you all know we like to leave it the longer the better. Um, so it says six to seven. We're going to do it for seven. And then while it's cooking with the season side down in most cases, not necessarily this one, um, I'm going to go ahead and season the other side. Oh, yes. Smarty, getting ahead of it, getting ahead of it, staying ahead of it. Perfect. Oh, it smells so good. I love chicken. I love chicken so much. Chicken is a really great lean meat, um, it so it's going to be kind of low calorie as long as you don't fry it. I mean, obviously, fried chicken. Ooh, but we do love some fried healthy. chicken, so I don't, I don't, okay. don't fry it every day. He loves some fried chicken. Yeah, don't fry I it don't every day. I don't eat fried chicken. <laughs> don't fry it every day. You know what I love is some fried chicken. Again, I try to be pescatarian, but I will do this mm -hmm. chicken because it's really well sourced. It's humanely raised, and basically, my main objections to like. 
eating things with faces are the way that they're raised up to the point of being food. If they had a happy life, like we have a relative who's a hunter. When he goes out and hunts something in the wild, like I'm totally fine with eating that because it had a happy life. Like it served its purpose. Like it's good to go. I just, I personally, this may not be you and that's totally fine, but I personally feel like that's okay. And so that's kind of like my line is like, did it have a happy life? Okay, cool. I'm good with that. Was it raised in like a horrible conditions? I'm not cool with that. So yeah, we don't want to further anything's uh, torment, but we do exactly. believe in the cycle of life. But yeah. you know, um, that it is kind of set up with an intelligence in mind. And if we went um, on Naked and Afraid, one of our favorite shows, and a lion ate us, I wouldn't be happy about it, but I would kind of get it, you know? like I would understand why it was <laughs> exactly. happening. I don't know if I could accept it, but on a, you know, an intel intellectual level, I think I would understand. Um, but I like lions, so I don't want to think about that. I think lions <laughs> would adopt me and be like, oh, you're one of us. Look at this furry man beast. He does be seriously awesome. identify be awesome. with lions. I do. I'm but not a Lion King kind of girl. He's every, a Lion King kind of dude. I think dude. every guy does, though. So, like, no one ever, like, oh, my spirit animal is the slug. No. Everyone's always, like, my spirit animal is the eagle or the lion or something cool, you know. You ever met anyone who's, like, my spirit what animal was the wallaby? What is your spirit animal? Like, uh, Jack Daniels? No. <laughs> <laughs> that is an option, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I think my spirit animal is, like, I don't know, probably, like, a mix. Um, I don't know. I think mainly the goat. You know, because it's like... Greatest of all time? The, uh, yeah, that's right. That's what he said go for. I didn't know. I didn't know that's, that's what that stood for, but that makes me feel really good. Um, but no, it's just always because I'm a it's Capricorn, so too. maybe that's... <laughs> but it's one of those things I've always like the testaments of it. It plays, but it also knows how to get to where it's going. You know what I mean? It's got a good balance. Um, and it seems to know how to enjoy a good time. And it leads everything, just like me. You and know, buddy... <laughs> It will stop in its tracks and refuse to go and headbutt you if you oppose it on something it really believes in. Oh, that's right. It ain't no fun. <laughs> so that's I kind of right. get that for you. That's right. I like it. Oh, this chicken's going to be so good. This is going to be delicious. I feel like my spirit animal like, is probably something that doesn't exist in our reality per se. A neon like, glow in the dark butterfly. That's what I think. Yeah. Those actually, I think those are called like lunar moths. They are. They don't actually go in the dark. Gorgeous. I actually, yes. Um, I had dinner with uh, my brother and his wife, and we hung out with one. One came out, and I was like, what is that? Even when you see it, you know it's not typical. Oh, they're this phenomenal. Is, it's gorgeous. We had a house that had two decks on the back, and it like opened up to an acre like or more of woods. Uh -huh. And the lunar moths would come to the windows at night, and whenever they did, we would just mm. turn off all the lights and just like look out at them because they're so beautiful. Not saying that I'm so beautiful. Just saying that, like, I tend not to live on this plane of existence. <laughs> and I know that about myself. So it can make communication sort of hard, but, like, it's but, super fun. But too. I'm sticking with uh, laser neon glow-in-the-dark butterfly. Because <laughs> lunar moths only neon. live for 24 hours, and that's way depressing. I sincerely hope uh, that's not. Oh, it's totally life. true. Because we Googled it while it was floating around us, and we got all like, oh, let's spend some time with this thing. It was awesome. Because it floated They're around. Really it was a cool. very kind of Disney-esque moment. Oh, yeah. Uh, very magical. It was very, very If awesome. you ever get a chance, like, they're seriously, like, super cool to observe. Like, mm -hmm. And there's something well, that's around here. So, yes. you know, you don't have to go far like the um, Aurora Borealis or whatever. Like, no, you can see them here. They're amazing. And it was under a street light, so it did literally glow. You know, I know it wasn't it glowing, but the lighting was very... Because that's what they do, like, all moths. It goes toward the light. Oh, and yeah. we're hanging out some restaurant or whatever in the parking lot, and it just came down and flooded, and I was immediately like, what is this? I wish I had my camera on me. Uh, but, you know, it's magical things happen as soon as you put your camera away. The, um... But it was really good because Amanda got on there and started Googling things, and that's when we learned certain things. And correct me if I'm wrong, because sometimes we Google things incorrectly. Um, but I do believe it only lives 24 hours. The other super cool thing about Lunar Moss and the fact that he was with a chick named Amanda while... Oh, that's Amanda's wife. Out. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Like, if you've ever read Tom Robbins, Another Roadside Attraction, put that all together. That's a magical oh, that? moment. So that's a book. Tom Robbins is an mm -hmm. author that I absolutely love. Another Roadside Attraction is one of his books. And Amanda is the main character in it, who's this hippie girl uh, who is obsessed with the lifespan of butterflies. Really? Yes. And it's phenomenal. <laughs> and it's very magical I'm and very mystical. No, uh, what's it called? It's called Another Roadside Attraction, and it's mm -hmm. by Tom Robbins. I like that. I covered these a little bit to get a little oomph on them. We're now about 50 seconds away. I'm going to flip these very, uh, very soon. I'm going to add a little bit more oil, just to make sure they don't stick. A little bit and of olive oil. And once he flips those, we're going to go for another six to seven minutes. 
That's right. That's right. And y'all know how we do. We cook that chicken through. We do. Mm, didn't even mean to rhyme. I'm just <laughs> okay. Um, so we're gonna do that, and then we're going to make the sauce with the fawn. Yes, which is gonna be delicious. delicious oh, all of this is sauce. gonna be delicious. Mm -hmm. It will be. I'm very much looking forward to it. And I like sauces, just like she does. They're good. The other thing that I, when people typically think, oh, I'm going to cook dinner, they skimp on. They don't add the sauce. They'll do like a chicken and potatoes or whatever, but then the gravy seems to be too much. Don't skip on the sauce. And if you're adventurous, you can find sauces that aren't super unhealthy. Now, don't be wrong. I'll take a bucket of gravy like anybody. Oh, there we go. Boom. Flipping these delicious guys. Ooh, ooh. Got that timer going again mm -hmm. for seven minutes on that chicken. And just kind of to pick up where Daryl David left off, um, sauces do kind of like just add a pop, right? They do. And I'm like, if y'all have watched the show, I try to be calorie yeah. conscious. I try to be health conscious. Like, I love ranch. Like, I have a hardcore, like, She's love always for smacking ranch. donuts out of my hand. Um, <laughs> but I do not put it on everything. And I've tried really hard to find some dressings that are, like, healthy, um, but also add, like, a lot of flavor. And there's one that I found that's like lemon based um, that makes a really good sauce for things to so just add a little nice. spritz to it. Um, <laughs> so just kind of look, they are out there um, that are healthy and that you can like add a little pop of flavor to without adding a bajillion calories. I like that. Absolutely. I'm just gonna stir a little bit of the pergola solo just cause it sits here. Oh yeah, for sure. And so we're gonna get that all stirred up together. Um, eventually, once our sauce is created, we're gonna add it to that, and then mm -hmm. we're just gonna put the chicken on top of it. And it'll say like, slice it crosswise or whatever. We never do that, we're adults. We have a knife and a fork. Like we just put the chicken on top and cut it as we go. And the main reason that we do that is so the juice from the chicken doesn't escape immediately and get the plate all soupy or whatever. Um, but you know, for presentation, it does look good if you cut it up. So it's either what your comfort is, but we tend to skip that step. We tend to be a little more efficient. If you wanted to cut it up, I would recommend putting out some sort of like paper towel or absorbent, whatever, cutting it on that. It's going to make it a little bit drier. But if you're looking for presentation and you're mm. using a sauce, then moving the sliced chicken and adding the sauce, probably going to cover that up a little bit. You know, whatever mm -hmm. came out, the sauce is going to make up for. Might make a little prettier presentation um, if you were doing it for, like, your fiance's parents mm -hmm. or, so, you know, some sort of special occasion. Otherwise, like, everybody's adults. They have knives. They have forks. Yeah, they, they can cut it. their own sauce. But that's the kind of the balance is whether or not it's presentation mm -hmm. or efficiency. You know, we make compromises sometimes. The, um, this is going to be delicious. We got four and a half minutes. I'm very the, excited um, about this dish, y'all. Oh, I am. Just give these guys a sneak peek. I mean, sizzle, sizzle. So, Look ooh, at that. Fantastic. So, when we add um, mm, the sauce, yummy. what we're going to make the sauce out of when we remove that chicken, and it has the fawn left in there, we're going to add the butter, we're going to add the juice of two mm. lemons, and we're going to add the capers. Mm. And that's really going to make up our sauce. So, the it's other not... Two are are going to be for garnish, I'm sorry. Yeah, the other two are going to be for garnish, and you want to add that to your chicken, oh, potentially, if you really like that. I love fresh lemon on broccoli, on chicken, yes. on pretty oh. much anything. It adds a great pop of flavor. Um, yeah, if you don't like vegetables, add some lemon to it and see if that doesn't oh, change sure. your mind. You can use, like, one half the amount of salt. Use Not lemon instead. on cheese, guys. That's lemon, true. citrus, and cheese. Yeah, Citrus that's true. and dairy. Good Not to know. great friends. Um, but if you have some, like, steamed broccoli and you add lemon to it, oh, my gosh. So freaking good. And just kind of a mind over matter trick. Like, if you're trying to be healthier, if you're like, no, I really have to do this. This is a health issue or this is, you know, mm. whatever. Um like just tell yourself as you eat it how good it is like just seriously sit there even That's if right. you hate it and be like this is amazing this is great i love this and like eventually you will really start to like it at least that has been my experience no. where i'm like i hated this but now it's really good <laughs> <laughs> well, it's delicious it's delicioso it is and some of the workouts we do like on our off days are adidas fantastic and what she will tell you in those videos is it's a mind-muscle connection. Like, mm -hmm. if you think more about the muscle area that you're working, you get more results. And they've actually done studies that show That's right. that if you concentrate on that muscle group and, con and like, visually in your mind work out, people who do that get better results than people who don't. Like, st 
quantifiably better results than people who don't make that connection. So there is like a mind over matter mm-hmm. thing going on that you could like potentially tap into to like, you know, lessen the physical like strain on your body and right. actually get better results. I think it keeps you on task. You know what I mean? I think it keeps you thinking about your form because that's the one thing she yes. constantly talks about there is most people are messing up their form. Or they're trying to get more reps, but they're compromising their form in order to achieve that. If you're being really mindful of what you're doing in the moment, you're not messing up your form, which means you only did 30 push-ups, but they're done the correct way, and they're equal to someone else's 60 or 70. And a lot of people don't do that fair comparison. And um, y'all, to be fair... I am the worst with form. Like, I had a buddy who was great at that, and he would mock me mercilessly when we worked out together. And it has literally taken me probably a decade to get my form, like, to a point where I'm actually, like, making, like, a big difference in my body when I'm working out. So, don't give up. You will get there. Just keep on trying. Keep watching. Keep practicing. Keep that mind and muscle, like, connection and keep telling yourself how positive it is even when you don't really feel that way. All these people at home are like, look at that dude. He doesn't work out. He yeah. does. <laughs> Three times a week at least. Like seriously. I do. I do. You gotta and do something. And he helps keep me motivated yeah. because a lot of the time like I'm the idea person. I'm like, let's get up. Let's That's do right. this. Let's, That's right. Yeah, let's go. And then when it comes time to do it, I'm like, I don't know. I don't really want to. Like, are you sure? You and he's like, through. we gotta go. Come on, we're doing this. Yeah. We got this. We and he like sincerely helps me like get through all of that. So I you really have appreciate have, this. Yeah, man. you do have to have a little bit of determination and follow through. Um, at the end of the day, I always like to get through and be like, "What did I accomplish?" Just like the beginning of the day, I'm like, "What do I try to accomplish?" And I want that list to be pretty much knocked off. You know what I mean? Where I call it closing tabs. Um, and I think that's always been important. I don't like to procrastinate or put things off. I want to get it done. You know. Um, and I have to recognize too that perfection isn't always something that's uh, possible. So you have to have that conversation with yourself and be like, well, is this going to stop me? You know what I mean? And my answer to that is always no. <laughs> like, no. However, I'm not easy to stop. The other side to that is sometimes you do need to take a break, yeah. take a breath, reset, refocus, <laughs> and then come back to something. And I'm not talking about like two days later. Potentially, like, you know, just take a 10 minute break to reset, get your bearings mm-hmm. again. And then come back to something can be more productive than trying to just push through, you yeah. know? And that's like for both of us. Sometimes when I'm trying to push through an exercise, I'm like, you know, I've compromised my form. This is absolutely yeah. not being effective or working right now. Like I need to stop, reset, and get, you know, back to like what's actually helping. So that that's all situations. Oh, Woo! That's the chicken. And it's also about maintaining your oxygen levels in your uh, blood too. If you just push yourself too hard, you don't get enough oxygen. So it's good to take a break. Absolutely. You gotta really breathe. Good. You gotta breathe. I think this One needs a little things. bit longer. I think we're just right. two minutes shy. We've got two more minutes going on there. If you well, we're gonna add the sauce to the Fregola Sarda before we plate it. I was gonna mm-hmm. say if you wanna go ahead and plate that, but that's not gonna Oh, work. it's not ready. Just no, 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 no. Yeah, it's not ready. I'm sorry. Uh, we're getting very close though. Yeah, we love it. She tricked me into exercising at first, and she tricks me into most things. I'm always trying to eat a donut and then swaps it out with some healthy, like, rice cake covered whatever. Uh, she's yeah, lucky I'm not. Yeah, didn't notice the difference. I just cut a hole in a rice cake. No, I <laughs> noticed, but she knows I'm hungry. I'll eat that while complaining about where my donut is. Um, and then sometimes she's like, see, that wasn't so bad. I'm like, oh, okay, it's not horrible. I'll take 14 more. And she'll give me, like, two. <laughs> um, but it's one of those things you have to recognize that when you're doing anything, you want to be a little bit mindful. You want to kind of dig in and look at what are the particular things I'm doing. Um, and then be be honest with yourself. Be accountable. At the end of the day, look at what you missed and try and hold yourself to that. Um, I'm always getting better. And as long as you're doing that, you're going to be fine. And, y'all, we're not mindfulness experts. Like, this is a little bit new to us, too. We're kind of, like, experimenting with mm-hmm. it. So we're trying to, like, meditate a little bit and stuff. Yeah. But as one of my friends said, if you try to meditate more than, like, one or two minutes at a time in the very beginning, you're going to give up. Yeah. Because stilling your mind like that... Um, it's, it's difficult. Oh, yeah. Um, and so maybe try for one or two minutes for the first week or two weeks, you know, depending on where you are. And then go from there and just add kind of a minute as you feel it necessary. There are a lot of things that you can do that are small, incremental things that in the end will add up to big results. Don't feel like you have to get there all in one day. Oh, man. Most people you don't. That's right. When I started writing when I was younger... I thought everybody just sat down and wrote a book. I legit thought that somebody just sat down and wrote that. 
it didn't occur yeah. to me that there was a team of editors, that there were a team of publicists, yeah. that there were a team of, you know, all these different people involved in making that successful. Ooh, that's Woo! our chicken. That's our chicken. And once Thank I found that out, team. it was a game changer. Oh, man. Right? our chicken then. Oh, yummy. And now, in that fantastic spawn you hear sizzling there. Yes, this right here, this goodness. What are we doing? What are we doing? The capers? We are going to do the butter. The, the capers butter. and the juice of two lemon wedges. There we go. Oh, no, let me Ooh, get this where did our, or a spoon. Yeah. Either way. Okay. So we're going to get the capers, the butter, and the juice of two lemon wedges. No, I'm supposed to do that, but it gets all the sticky off. Boom. Yeah, no, you're really not. Um... No, wood's fine for a knife. It is. Um, yeah. oh, oh. Um, I'm going to throw that butter in. Yeah. Boom. Got some the lemon The juice juices. of two women ledges. Ooh. I'll get that in there. Stir that in good. Oh. oh. Or a whole one. That's right. You need, oh, okay. oh, you good? You good? Yep, I'm good. All right, all right. Uh, there we got go. It. And then how long does this go for? So I think that it's going to go for a very short period of time, like a minute to a minute and a half. Um, yeah, 30 seconds to one minute. So All we'll right. go ahead and put one minute on there and we may not even need that. And do we add it to the Fregola Sardine? Yes, and then we're going to add it to the Fregola Sardine mm. and the Zucchini and we're all of so that close. fun stuff. Getting so close, y'all. We are so close. Win. And I like the uh, Fregola Sardine. So is that a family name, I wonder? It's Italian, so I bet it is. So Fregola refers to the pasta and Sarda, I believe, refers to the Italian island of Sardinia, oh, where okay. it's from. Um, I remember you saying that earlier, but I was kind of doing yeah. a couple other things. So I'm still but the Fergola is just a name up. for the um, semolina flour and okay. water that's mixed together and formed into like tiny pasta balls. Ooh, I like that. This Instead guy's of going. Noodles. Ooh, yeah, that is going. That looks fantastic. It does. And it smells really good too. Oh man, it's all that garlic. We put enough garlic in there for it to be a little extra for the sauce too. We did, and to be fair, I did not think I liked butter that much. Um, I was wrong. We all like butter <laughs> that much. We do. Oh, that's oh, that. There we go. So I'm turning off the heat. Yep. And we're adding this off. to the fregola sarda. Absolutely. And to the um, vegetables that we've got in there, mm. which are the sweet peppers and the zucchini. Boom, boom. Stir this all in. Yep, we're gonna mix that all in there. That's gonna be the sauce. And then that's gonna be our base that we put the chicken on. I like, like we that. said, pretty simple meal, guys. Well, here, I'll do that over here. Ooh, Ooh. kind of jumped out at me there. Stuff happening in the kitchen, y'all. It is. It gets chaotic in the kitchen. <laughs> it does. It does, and that's okay. And then we're gonna use the last two lemon wedges that um, you potentially see there um, for yeah. garnish. And typically, we just put those over the chicken, over everything, and it's phenomenal. That's right. Phenomenal. That's my little thing. I don't know, I know where right? That came from, but it is from something. So. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah, don't see too much of it. You'll get a suit. I know. Right? Um, <laughs> Keep a public domain in here. I mean, I uh, invented that. No, she didn't. Phenomenon. No, she didn't. She yeah. Did. She did. She totally. did. That's exactly how we get sued. We did not make that. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, no. <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't. So make we're it. putting you think our it's chicken fun, over the uh, And I'm also sarda. wrestling here, and it's just not working out right. So we're putting our chicken over the fagola sarda and the mixed vegetables. We've got our sauce mixed in there, and it's going to be delicious. We've got our lemon wedges on the side. That are just gonna add a really nice fresh pop to that um, when we start to eat, That's and right. it's gonna be so good. Delicious, so good. delicious. Look at Absolutely. that and how that turned out. So look at that. Good. If you'll hold it up a little bit. Oh, look at that! Look at that! <laughs> Seared chicken and Frida Sarda. Fragola Sarda. Fragola Sarda. <laughs> Sorry, I was getting it right too. I was you getting are, it right. You were very close. All right, can you guys go? I'm Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. And this is Two Aprons. David was too much. Oh my! That is not the only.